So section 4.5 is now finally combining unlike fractions together. So when we have different denominators, we need to make them common before we can actually combine. So we're using the skills from 4.4, so if you haven't watched that video yet, go back and watch. It's a very important skill that we're going to use in the rest of the sections in chapter 4. So let's take that first example, and we want to add together 3 fourths and 1 6. We don't have common denominators, and we need common denominators. So let's first work at figuring out, well, what is the least common between 4 and 6? So how do we do it? We're going to take 4, break it into its primes, and we're going to take 6 and break it into its primes. At that point, now we can start building. Our LCD has to be divisible by what? By 4, so I need to take into account a factor of 2 and another factor of 2. And what is our LCD missing that 6 has? A factor of 3. So the least common multiple between 4 and 6, and they happen to live in the denominator, so the least common denominators are going to be what? 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. So we know what the smallest common multiple between 4 and 6 is. Let's build those to this common multiple now. So to turn 4 into 12, what do we have to multiply by? 3, and whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. Because in reality, what are we multiplying by? 1. We're just changing what it looks like. So now our equivalent fraction is going to turn into what? 3 fourths is going to become 3 times 3, which is 9, over 3 times 4, which is 12. So they're still equivalent, but now we have this denominator that we know we can build 6 to share in common with. We're going to do the same thing to 6. To turn 6 into 12, what do we have to multiply by? 2. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So we're adding on to this the equivalent fraction of 1 6. And what is it turning into? 1 times 2 gives us 2, and 6 times 2 gives us 12. So now that we have those common denominators, we know what to do. Keep the same denominator and add across the top. 9 and 2 together gives us 11, and 11 twelfths does not reduce, so we know we're done. Okay. We're going to do the same thing in the last of these examples before we move on to subtraction. So let's take the next one. 4 and 15 are the denominators that we're working with. We need them to become a common multiple. So let's take each of them and break them into their primes. 5 is prime, it can't be broken up, but 15 can be broken up into 5 and 3, both of which are prime. So our LCD then, it has to be divisible by what? By 5, and it has to be divisible by 15. So what is our LCD missing that 15 has? Factor of 3. So our least common denominator is 15 just happens to be one of the denominators that's already present. So the second one we don't have to alter because it already shares that common denominator. But the first one, to turn 5 into 15, what do we have to multiply by? 3. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So our equivalent expression, let's see what we're looking at. 3 times 2 gives us 6 over 3 times 5 is 15, and we're adding on to that 4 fifteenths. We didn't have to alter that one because it already shared the common denominator. Now that we do have matching denominators, let's add across the top and keep the same denominator. 6 and 4 together gives us 10 over 15, which we can reduce. They both share one in common, a 5. And if we want to break up and see the factors, we can. If you can reduce it without doing so, fine. 10, we can break up into 5 and 2, 15, 5, and 3. So we can take out that common factor, and this reduces down to 2 thirds. All right. Same story with these last two. We want to find the least common denominator between 15 and 10. So we'll take each of them, 
and break them into their primes. 15, we can break up into 5 and 3, both of which are prime. 10, 2 and 5, 5 and 2, order doesn't matter, both of which are prime. So let's build our LCD. Has to be divisible by both of them, so choose 1. I'm going to start with 15 because it came first. We took all of those factors, and what is our LCD missing that 10 has? A factor of 2. So our least common denominator is going to be what? 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30. So the smallest common denominator between 15 and 10 is 30. Let's build to that common denominator then. To turn 15 into 30, we have to multiply by 2. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So what is our equivalent fraction coming out in this case? 2 times 2x gives us 4x up top. And down below, 2 times 15, 30, our common denominator. We want to do the same thing on our second fraction. To turn 10 into 30, what do we have to multiply by? 3. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So across the top, what do we have? 3 times 3x gives us 9x, and 10 times 3 is 30. So we have our common denominator now, so we'll keep that same denominator and add across the top. 9x and 4x together gives us what? 13x's all over 30. 13 is prime, so we can't uh, simplify it all. So we're done. And the last one. In this case, we've got a negative on our first fraction. We can give that negative to the 1 so we don't have to deal with it in the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and make note of that right now. I'm going to give the negative to the 1 so we can consider the denominator as 6. Just keep it positive. So 6 and 2, we want smallest common multiple between those two. 2 is prime, but 6 can break up into 3 and 2. You can probably already tell what's going to happen. Our least common denominator has to be divisible by 6. So we'll take all of those factors into account. And are we missing anything in our LCD that this other factor has? No, it already lives inside of there. So the least common denominator is 6. So the first one already has that common denominator. So we don't have to alter it. We're going to get negative 1 over 6. But we'll add on to that, we're going to have to change this one's form. So to turn 2 into 6, we have to multiply by 3. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And across the top, what do we get? 1 times 3 is 3. And 2 times 3 is 6 down below. We have our common denominator, so we'll just add across the top. In between those two, which one holds more weight, the positive or the negative? the positive value, and the difference between them is 2. And 2 6 can reduce down to what? 1 third. So 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 6 three times to reduce down to a third. So it's pretty much the same story with subtraction as well, but we might as well get some more practice. So in our first example, when we're subtracting these two, we need to have common denominators. So as we build, 3 is prime and 11 is prime. So as we build our LCD, we have to take into account what? A factor of 3 and a factor of 11. So our least common denominator between these two is 33. So we're going to have to alter both of them. To turn 3 into our LCD, we have to multiply by 11. And whatever I do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So our equivalent fraction coming out of our first term is going to be what? 11 times 2 is 22 over 11 times 3, which is 33. And we'll do the same over here. To turn 11 into 33, we have to multiply by 3. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So we're subtracting off 10 times 3 is 30 up top. And 11 times 3, 33. We're just double checking to make sure we get our common denominator. Now that we do have that common denominator, we can just subtract across the top, keep the same denominator. 
And as we combine those numerators, which one holds more weight, the positive or the negative? The negative. And what's the difference between 30 and 22? We get minus 8 over 33. And can we reduce that down? Nope. So we're done. Moving on to the next one. We want a common denominator between 4, 14, and 7. So let's take each of those and break them into their primes. 4 can be broken up into 2 and 2, both of which are prime. 14 can be broken up into 2 and 7, both of which are prime. And 7 already is prime. So when we build our LCD, it has to be divisible by what? I'm just going to start with 4. So we'll take two 2's into account. And it also has to be divisible by 14. So what is our LCD missing that 14 has? A factor of 7. And are we missing anything in our LCD that this last term has? Nope, we've already got that into account. So 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 7, we get 28, our common denominator. So each of those we want to rewrite with that common denominator of 28. And we'll assign the negative to the numerator so we don't have to deal with any negatives down below. So to turn 4 into 28, what do we have to multiply by? 7. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So our equivalent fraction, negative 3 fourths, is the same as what? 7 times negative 3 gives us negative 21 over 28. To turn 14 into 28, we have to multiply by 2. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So we've got negative 1 times 2, which will give us that negative 2 over 28. And then to turn 7 into 28, we have to multiply by 4. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So we're adding on now, because that one was positive. 6 times 4 is 24, 7 times 4, 28. So we have that common denominator everywhere. And again, the negatives, we'll just give it to the numerator. So all of the denominators will match. So we keep our common denominator of 28, and we're combining together negative 21 minus 2 plus 24. So as we work from left to right, we've got two negatives together. So that will give us a negative more negative, and the sum of those two gives us 23, and we still have to add 24 onto that. So which one holds more weight between these two, the positive or the negative? The positive, and the difference between them is 1. So all of that reduces down to 1 28th. And we're going to do the same on our last example here before you try a few. And number 2, we don't have a uh, traditional fraction. So we could always put 2 over what? Over 1, if we need to see it like that. And then what is our least common denominator between 1 and 3? Three? 3. So we only have to alter this first one. And to turn 1 into 3, we have to multiply by 3. Whatever I do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So what is our equivalent fraction? We've got 3 times 2, which is 6 and 3 times 1, which is 3. And we can always double check. Is 6 divided by 3 really 2? Yeah. And then our other one, we already had that common denominator. So since we have the common denominator, we keep that, and we add or subtract across the top. And those two are not like terms, so we're simplified. We can't go any farther. So there's three for you to try. Combine these guys together. And in part A, what's our LCD between 7 and 21? The LCD is 21. To turn 7 into 21, what do we have to multiply by? 3. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So our equivalent fraction is now going to become what? 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 7 is 21. And we didn't have to alter the second one. So now that we have common denominators, we keep the same denominator and add across the top. So 6 and 8 together is going to give us what? 14. 
Both of these share one in common, a 7. 7 goes into 14 how many times? Twice. And 7 goes into 21 how many times? Three times. So this will reduce down to 2 thirds. And in part B, LCD between 5 and 20 is 20. And with our negative, we'll assign it to the numerator. To turn 5 into 20, what do we have to multiply by? 4. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So I've got 4 times negative 1, which will give me negative 4. All over 4 times 5, which is 20, plus 9 20 -ths. So we have our common denominator. We keep it, and we add across the top. Negative 4 plus 9. Which one holds more weight between those two, the positive or the negative? The positive. And what's the difference between 9 and 4? We get 5 over 20. And they both share one in common, a 5. So 5 goes into 5 once, and 5 goes into 20 four times. So that reduces down to 1 fourth. And then in part C, the LCD might be a little bit larger. So let's break these ones down. We want to take 8 and break it into the primes, 3 and 12. 3 is already prime, so the ones that require work are 8 and 12. 8 can break up into 4 and 2, and 4 breaks up into 2 and 2. 12, it doesn't matter how we start, 6 and 2. And 6 breaks up into 3 and 2. So we have all of our primes, and let's build that LCD. So that LCD has to be divisible by what? By 8. So we'll take all of those factors into account. And what is our LCD missing that 3 has? The factor of 3. And are we missing anything here that 12 has? No. We've taken all of those into account. So I've got 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8, and 8 times 3 is 24. So we have our common denominator to work with. Let's use that to alter all of these. So to turn 8 into 24, what do we have to multiply by? 3, top and bottom. And I'm going to make a little bit more room for myself right here. To turn 3 into 24, what do we have to multiply by? 8, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And then to turn 12 into 24, we have to multiply by 2. So, let's write down our equivalent fractions that we're working with. All the way on the left, 3 times 5 gives us 15 24ths. And we're subtracting off 8 24ths. And we're subtracting off 2 24ths. So, now that we have that common denominator, we'll keep it. And we'll just add across the top. So I've got 15 minus 8 minus 2. And let's see what we get in the end, our total. 15 minus 8 is going to give us what? 5, 6, 7, 8, 7. 7 minus 2, we get 5. And can we reduce that any farther? No, 5 and 24 don't share anything in common. So we also need the LCD for more concepts, like when we're trying to compare two fractions. For example, if we want to compare 3 fourths and 9 elevenths, to talk about which one is larger or smaller, they have to be divided into the same number of pieces. So what is our LCD between 4 and 11? So 11 is prime, and 4 has factors of 2 living inside of it. So they don't share any common factors. So our LCD, we're going to have to take into account a factor of 4 and a factor of 11. So 44 is our common denominator. So to turn 4 into our common denominator, we have to multiply by what? 11. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So our equivalent fraction to 3 fourths is what? 33 over 44. We've just scaled it up. And to turn 11 into 44, we have to multiply by 4. So across the top, 9 times 4, we get 36. And across the bottom, 11 times 4, we get 44. So now we can actually compare between the two, since they're divided into the same number of pieces. So which of these is larger? 
36 is larger than 33, so we could say 33 44ths is less than 36 44ths. And since we didn't flip-flop any sides, that inequality is still going to hold for our reduced fractions as well. So we're going to do the same thing in B. First, we have to find common denominators, and we'll give the negatives to the numerator. So our LCD has to be divisible by what? By 7, and it also has to be divisible by 3. So the least common between those two is 21. So to turn 7 into 21, we have to multiply by 3. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So across the top, what do we get? Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And down below, 7 times 3 is 21. And to turn 3 into 21, we have to multiply by 7, top and bottom. So across the top, what do we get? Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. And then 3 times 7 is 21. So which of those is larger? Negative 6 or negative 7? So I always like to draw a little number line to get a gist of what we're talking about in this case when our numbers are negative. So if 0 is here, negative 6 is to the left of that value, and negative 7 is just a little bit more to the left of that value. So as we move to the right, it gets larger and more positive. So negative 6 is larger than negative 7. So negative 6 out of 21 is going to have to be larger than negative 7 out of 21, which means, again, we can go all the way back to our reduced fractions, and that inequality is still going to hold. All right, we can also evaluate an expression when we have different denominators like this, and we'll have to make common denominators to combine them together. So if we want to evaluate x minus y when x is equal to 7 eighteenths, so we'll just start plugging in, and our y value is 2 ninths. So we want to be able to combine those two together. So what is the least common denominator that we're working with? 18, since 9 is a factor inside of 18, so we don't have to touch this one. But 9, we're going to have to multiply by what? to get us to 18, 2. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So our equivalent fraction, we've got 7 18 minus what? 2 times 2 is 4, and 9 times 2 is 18. We're just double checking, making sure we have the correct denominator, and we do. And as we subtract across the top, 7 minus 4 gives us what? 3 over 18. Both of those share a 3 in common, so we can reduce it down even farther. 3 goes into 3 how many times? Once. And 3 goes into 18 how many times? 6. So that guy can reduce down to 1 sixth. So the last thing is for you to try. Compare these two by first making a common denominator. So let's take 8, our first denominator, and 20 and break them up into the primes. So 8 we can break up into 4 and 2. 2 is prime, 4 can keep going, and we're done there. 20 we can break up into 4 and 5. 5 is prime, but 4 keeps breaking up. So our LCD has to be divisible by one of them, so I'm going to take all of my 2's from 8 into account. And what is our LCD missing that 20 has? A factor of 5. So the least common denominator between 8 and 20 is what? So we've got 5 times 2 is 10, times another 2 is 20, times another 2 is 40. So to turn 8 into 40, what did you have to multiply by? 5 over 5. What we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And to turn 20 into our LCD, we have to multiply by 2. So what are our equivalent fractions that we're working with? 5 times 5 is 25. 8 times 5 is 40. And over here, 11 times 2, we get 22. And 20 times 2, we get 40. So we've got our common denominators. And 25 is larger than 22. And if we go up to our reduced fraction, that inequality is still going to hold.
So the last two examples in this section are just application problems. We'll have to build the expression and combine it from there. So very first, we've got a semi, and it's got one-fourth of a ton of computers, one-third of a ton of televisions, and three-eighths of a ton of small appliances. And we want to find the total weight of the load. So that word total implies what operation? Addition. We're just combining them all together. So the first example, what do we want to combine? The first weight that they gave us was one-fourth of a ton. And we're adding on to that the second weight, which was one-third of a ton. And the last one was three-eighths of a ton. So we want to be able to combine all of those together to find the total. So we have to find the LCD between what? Four, three, and eight. So off on the side, let's break up four into its primes, two and two. And three is already prime. And eight can break up into four and two. And four can break up into two and two. So we've got all of the primes present. And what is our LCD going to be? Has to be divisible by four. So we'll take two factors of two into account. It also has to be divisible by three. So what are we missing down here? That three has, factor of three. And what is our LCD missing? That 8 has another factor of 2. So our LCD between all three of these is going to be what? 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24. So the least common multiple between 4, 3, and 8 is 24. So let's build our equivalent fractions. To turn 4 into 24, we have to multiply by what? Six. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And to turn 3 into 24, we have to multiply by 8, top and bottom. And to turn 8 into 24, we have to multiply by 3. So what is our equivalent expression looking like? First term is now going to become 6 over 24. And we're adding on to that 8 over 24. And we're adding on to that 9 over 24. So now that we have that common denominator, let's just add across the top. Got 6, 8, and 9 together, and that's all over 24. So as we combine from left to right, everything is positive. 6 and 8 together gives us what? 14. And we've got 14 and 9 that we're adding together for our numerator. So 9 and 4 gives us 13, carry the 1. 1 and 1, we get 23 24ths. And what are the units on this thing? We found the total weight of the semi's load. And those units were reported in tons. So we have 23 24ths of a ton. Total weight. Super heavy. Okay. Next one, similar story. We've got a flight from Tucson to Phoenix, Arizona, and it requires 5 twelfths of an hour. And if a plane has been flying for 1 fourth of an hour so far, find how much time remains before landing. So the entire flight requires how much time? 5 twelfths of an hour. So that's what we're starting with. And we're removing off the amount that it's already flown. And it's already flown for how long? One-fourth of an hour. So the time remaining, what's left over, is going to be the difference between those two. So our total length for the flight minus the amount that it's already been in the air for will give us the remaining. So we want to find the LCD between 12 and 4. And what is our LCD? 12. So we already have our common denominator over here. To turn 4 into 12, we have to multiply by 3, top and bottom. So our equivalent expression, we've got 5 twelfths minus 3 twelfths. Now that we have the common denominator, we'll just subtract across the top. And what is 5 minus 3? We get 2. 2 twelfths 
which reduces down to what? So 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 12 six times. So how much time is remaining? One-sixth of what unit time? An hour. So I've got one-sixth of an hour remaining. But usually we don't talk in those terms. We could say half an hour remaining, but we usually don't break it into sixths. So what is one-sixth of an hour? An hour is worth how many minutes? 60 minutes. So one hour is 60 minutes. So if we take 60 minutes and divide it into six different pieces, how much time do we have left? Another way to say it, or 10 minutes remaining. A little bit more practical for everyday life. 